the first episode of Succession's fourth season could almost be called formulaic. Two rival groups, here it's three of the Roy siblings versus their dad and his lackeys, engage in intense and ruthless business wars to seize power and control. Here it's over who gets to buy Pierce Global Media, one of Waystar Royco's main rivals. There's creative back and forth banter with plenty of colourful swears, meetings more intense than any war film, constant bickering between the sides and within their own ranks over whether the correct strategy is being pursued here. It's all exactly what we've come to expect from the show over the last four seasons. Again, you could argue that this is a sign that Succession has become tired, that it's simply treading old ground and cycling through the same old slap fights between these rich narcissists, maybe ending in one of them becoming a little bit richer than they already were. The Roy siblings win against their father, they get the media conglomerate, and he doesn't. Very little materially changes for any of them beyond a corporate dealings level. What a by-the-book episode of Succession. Business as usual. But then, Logan says this. Congratulations on saying the biggest number, you f***ing morons. So, if we take a look at Jesse Armstrong's writing career prior to Succession, it's pretty much all comedies, apart from that one Black Mirror episode where Doctor Who gets a divorce. His most well-known works out of those would be The Thick of It, where he's credited as a writer on every episode until halfway through the third season, plus Peep Show and Fresh Meat, which he co-created with Sam Bain. These three shows, if you ask me, are British sitcoms in their purest form, especially indicative of the kinds of universally high-quality comedies we were putting on TV in the 2000s and early 2010s. I say universally. All of them strongly bear Armstrong's creative influence and are all about mean, selfish people doing mean, selfish things and learning virtually no lessons from their continuing misadventures at all. The classic sitcom reset is used here as a way to emphasise the lack of self-awareness and morals of these characters. Another quite common aspect of these shows is how many of their plots revolve around, to use a technical term, trivial bullshit. The majority of their plots deal with perceived social slights or awkward situations that spin out of control because most everyone involved is incapable of acting like an adult for five seconds. Even The Thick of It, a show about the people who literally run my country, is set in a fictional government department that deals with the aforementioned trivial so-and-so. The worst case scenario for them most of the time is that the British government gets mildly embarrassed, which is just such a rare event these days. So the reason I'm recapping this man's entire career is because when put in the context of that career, Succession is very clearly the culmination of themes and characters that Jesse Armstrong has been exploring for a long time. Heart-hitting analysis incoming here, Succession is also about self-absorbed narcissists fighting with each other about things that ultimately don't really matter, but this time they are actually powerful people. The decisions they make, often the ones Logan makes, or you know, made, do directly affect thousands of people and indirectly influence millions more. Plus, most everyone in the main cast could lose an entire neighbourhood's yearly salaries in one business deal and it would just register as a minor annoyance for them, or, more likely, it would only be devastating on an emotional level. Their wealthy lifestyle and comfort therein would remain unaffected. Kendall being booted out of Waystar in Season 1 is not going to suddenly make him destitute. He could sit around on his ass all day collecting dividends for the rest of his life if he wanted, and a lot of us in that situation would be more than happy to do that. Dad's selling the company, and I get millions of dollars as a payout? Sure, where do I sign? So that's the big difference between Succession when compared with Armstrong's previous work, an ongoing tension between comedy and drama. It's not like those other shows never had dramatic moments, I would tell you all that I cried at the Fresh Meat finale if it wouldn't get me bullied on YouTube.com. But the two tones are more equal here, they're jostling for attention, in a way. Kendall's big bored takedown of Logan being thwarted because he gets stuck in traffic and has to sprint through Manhattan only to find that he's too late is a situation straight out of one of those previous shows. But the empathy shown to Kendall, a man with deep insecurities caused by his abusive father, is what turns it into drama and tragedy. That's what makes us care about the boardroom dealings of these stuck-up rich assholes who I would be bullying on Twitter if they existed in real life. Like I said, at several points in the show, all of the Roy siblings could cash out and walk away to go and live cushy, quiet lives and never need to lift a finger again. But Logan has hammered into them, often violently, the importance of legacy. The importance of securing your succession. And so when we see them driving themselves and each other insane over stuff that, to people without millions upon millions of dollars, does not really matter that much at all, it stops being so funny at a certain point. And I think what this final season has done is present the comedy and the drama of this as more at odds here than they've ever been before. Which brings us back to Logan and the highest number. 
Because remember, he dies just two episodes after he says this. In fact, the last conversation that he ever has with his kids, one episode later, ends with them threatening to sink the deal with Matson because they want more money. They again want to hear Matson say the highest number possible, and by extension Logan, even though they already stand to get more money from the deal than you or I will ever see in our lifetimes. And the last thing Logan ever says in person to all of his children is... I love you. But you are not serious people. That's what the rest of Succession Season 4 is trying to answer. Are the Roy siblings, when it comes down to it, serious people? Or are they four morons who are throwing away a chance to get out clean because they're unable to fully separate themselves from their father? Have we simply been watching a family rip themselves apart over absolutely nothing in spectacular fashion for the last four years, or can some meaning still be extracted? Interestingly, Connor, of all people, in the very next episode featuring Logan's death, makes his decision pretty decisively. Upon getting the news that Logan has died, he shrugs, claims that his dad never liked him anyway, and heads off to marry his wife with only the people who actually wanted to be at his wedding watching on. Out of the four Roy siblings, Connor has always been the one played most for laughs, the idiot libertarian with the girlfriend turned fiancé who he has to pay to like him. The guy who, more often than not, shows up in an episode to spout some nonsense and then get bullied. Everybody thinks you're a joke. And you're f embarrassing me. Right. He definitely has his own trivial BS that he's treating super seriously, that of running a presidential campaign which is polling at 1%, but it's separate from his dad, and mostly separate from Waystar. It's something that truly represents him striking out on his own, obviously with the same very privileged and wealthy upbringing he shares with his siblings, but it turns out that the child Logan spent the least time mentoring on how to stand on your own two feet is the Roy who needs him the least. The good thing about having a family that doesn't love you is you learn to live without it. Connor is, as of time of writing, the only serious person among the Roys, in my opinion. Again, if he were a real person, nonce in the replies every day of the week, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, speaking of that whole wedding episode, it's essentially one big exercise in taking the wind out of the sails of those little traitors three. Because the end of season three and the beginning of four was so cathartic for the audience. Finally, all of the Roy siblings, the ones that people care about anyway, united as one and ready to take on their dad. Even if they get betrayed by certain Tomlets, they're still a cohesive unit, ready to stand up for one another and get revenge on their dad for all the crap he's done to them over the years. And then... Logan dies. Quite unexpectedly, mostly off screen. Just like that, none of it seems that fun anymore. Kendall and Roman are so distraught that they nearly forget to tell Shiv and do outright forget to tell Connor. Shiv is crying on the phone to her daddy after throwing his weak attempts at an apology back in his face during the previous episode. So just like with episode 1, Connor's wedding starts out as another succession good time, swearing and stuttering dialogue, people asking things like what's the play? and then the real world interrupts with that one phone call. The comedy of business dealings versus the drama of family relationships is completely overridden by the latter. There is very little dark comedy to be had here, it's just tragic and sad and depressing. The series 1 finale did have a similar shift when Kendall inadvertently gets that waiter killed and Logan blackmails him over it, but that is very much the climax of the episode. Not, as it is here, the inciting incident. Drama has always occasionally poked its head over the comedy of this show to hammer home, wow, this is all kind of messed up, huh? But from episode 3 onwards, it feels like it's here to stay. There's an elephant in the room of every episode now. That of the show and the Roys themselves no longer being able to ignore the question of how much this, again, very trivial BS really matters. All of that fighting, all of those mind games and backstabs and board votes, all of that ends with a heart attack in an aeroplane bathroom. Now, let's think for a moment about an episode that stands as a direct contrast to this one, Season 3, Episode 5. Here, in an episode dealing primarily with the business stuff, the Waystar Royco annual shareholders meeting, much of the conflict comes from Logan being totally incoherent due to not taking medication for a UTI, while his staff attempt to stall for time and pretend everything is fine in public so that the company isn't snatched out from under them by Sandy and Stewie. It's still got a sprinkling of drama, but it is, in my opinion, the most thick of it episode of Succession we've gotten so far. And if you thought I was just waffling on about a succession episode I like with absolutely no connection to this video's argument, then you must not be aware of just how hard I can squint to connect things that probably aren't connected at all. Let's kill some authors. Season 4 episode 6 deals with another Waystar Royco Investors meeting, this time one without Logan and one that is really feeling his absence. 
While he's obviously still been a large off-screen presence, this is the first time he's actually appeared again since episode 3. This episode feels on a metatextual level like it's a rerun of that season 3 episode, complete with comedy hijinks throughout. Greg tries to get a sound engineer to edit Logan's last words and berates him in an extremely Greggy way. Kendall is pinging off the walls and spouting nonsense corpo speak while also failing so badly at lying to Shiv about business deal that he basically becomes Joe Bluth. You even have Tom making a snide comment backstage about Kendall's onstage performance, just like he did a season earlier. He's not even wearing a tie. <laughs> to me, it feels like that self-awareness poking through again. We've been here before and the script knows that. Waystar could, once again, be in trouble if this presentation doesn't go well and it's a mad, insane, ludicrous scramble for the Roys to sort it all out. Which is why Roman's story in this one is so interesting. He is, on more than one level, the first one to break. The first one unable to pretend anymore. He fires Joy Palmer, the head of Waystar's film division, and then he fires Jerry, a woman with very easily accessible pictures of his penis on her phone. And aside from that, he just wanders around passively agreeing with Kendall's insane ideas until he closes out the whole thing by listening to an edited recording of his dead father saying how much he hates him. Even when this season of Succession tries, tries is in massive quotation marks here, this is of course peak television, to do that kind of comedic episode it once did, it can't fully commit anymore because Roman can't commit anymore. What does all this pointless bickering about numbers and investments and projections matter now that he'll never see his father again, never get any real closure on the years of abuse that he suffered? We see this from him in episode 5 too, which centers around yet another game of saying the biggest number. For a full hour, the Roys put on a grand performance for Matson, a man who seems to hold a pretty large amount of contempt for them, just so they can once again get a little bit richer than they already are. Roman is initially content to suck it up and play Matson's game so that he and his siblings can finally strike out on their own until Connor, deliberately separate from the business goings on once again, sends him a picture of their dad's body dressed for the funeral. That's when he flips out at Matson after the man calls his dead father a prick, tells him that he and Kendall never wanted to sell Waystar and declares that they're absolutely never going to sell it to him. And then Matson offers a much higher number and they sell. Roman pulled the ripcord, essentially declared that he really, really doesn't care about whether he could stand to make a little more money now, and he still gets it anyway. It's like he's suddenly become aware of the general conceit of the show that he's on, tried to escape from it, and had that thrown back in his face. Plus, he's pretty obviously been heading for some sort of breakdown this entire season, to the point where it's a pretty popular theory that he might himself before the final credits roll. Now, I personally don't think that Succession is the type of show to kill Logan and Roman in the same season, especially when Logan's death was telegraphed as far back as the pilot episode. Um, this is before we even take into account the fact that Roman is my son and literally me and none of you f***ing losers understand him like I do. But at time of writing, the fourth season is still airing. We are still here wondering how it's going to end and that means I suppose that I should close out this little video by making a prediction. I've never been incredibly good at predicting twists and turns in TV shows or movies. I didn't even realise that dude in series 10 of Doctor Who was the master until he took the prosthetics off and they told us about that one in the bloody trailers. But if we want to get scientific about it, several members of the cast have said they were surprised to find out that this would be the final season, suggesting that the show will not be ending with some clear final moral or change for its characters. That they will, like in so many Britcoms, learn absolutely nothing and keep on being terrible people in wherever fictional TV characters go after their show's end. It's how Jesse Armstrong and Sam Bain ended Peep Show, after all. Anyway, whatever Succession's ending will be, I know that, first of all, it's going to be very good. It's more than earned my trust on that front. But I also think that any change will be incremental. At best, we might get a hint that the Roys can change. A glimmer of hope that they don't have to be pushed around by the ghost of their father anymore. Now that he's not physically here, they are all, for the first time in their lives, really reflecting on what they've chosen to prioritise, what ridiculous situations they let themselves get involved in, how much of their time they have voluntarily wasted over the last four years. And the show is telling you, by repeating these situations that we've seen before, by not allowing us to fully escape into the wacky waste scenarios that we all know and love, what it really thinks of these people. The moral of Succession, if it can be reduced to just one, is pretty simple and universal, and Season 4 has become more intent on pushing it than ever before. You should choose caring about your family over money. You should choose caring about your family over power. You should choose caring about your family over dying in an aeroplane bathroom surrounded by people who are only with you because you're paying their mortgages. Logan made his choice long ago, and now his children have to make that same choice. 
they can either choose to finally let it all go, put in the work to move on from Waystar and Logan Roy, whatever that may hold for them, or they can convince themselves that this time will be different. That one more board meeting or investor pitch or negotiation session in the woods will finally bring them the satisfaction and meaning that has, in fact, been so easily within their grasp for years, and that they have time and time again chosen to let go, and all because they can't stop themselves from trying to say the biggest number. This video was made possible by all of my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special thank you to Sam by Night, Flames of James, Fifi M, DJB13, and Mbion Wee for subscribing at my highest tier. If you'd like to click the link in the description and become a patron yourself, your support would mean the world for me. Thanks for watching and see you next time.